Now, we have this picture, the Garden of Eden. It is the palace of God, the Creator. And like a royal palace, like the God described in the Ugaritic literature, it is the place from which all the great waters flow out. And it is also the place that is guarded by the Kerubim. What are the Kerubim? They are mentioned in the Bible in connection with several, well, primarily in connection with the building of the temple. And they have been traditionally misinterpreted as little angels. And so Kerubim become, in uh, English, cherubs. And cherubs are well-fed little babies with wings. And the Italians call them cherubini, little angels. And they're usually portrayed in that form. That's not what they are. We know what they are because we have hundreds of representations of cherubim in sculpture in Babylonia and Assyria and Canaan and variations in Greece and in Egypt. The cherub was a fantastic figure. That is a figure which doesn't exist, but which contains all the elements of power. So its basic structure was <clears throat> a sculpture with the body of a lion or a bull. Take your choice. They're both tough animals. They all have in Assyria, Babylonia, and in Canaan, in Phoenicia, they have eagle's wings. That's two big numbers. Body of a bull, wings of an eagle, and then the head of a man. There you have it. That is the classic top-ranking creature. So if you have the head of a man with human intelligence, wings of an eagle, you can soar, body of a bull or a lion, then you're in control. But there's no such animal. But it is a figure of mythological portrayal. But they made them in plastic form. That is carved in stone, in ivory, and painted. Now the, the Babylonian and the Assyrian figures that we have are impressive. By impressive, I mean that there is there are a few of them in American museums. There are some in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. There's one, I think, in Boston. There's one in the University of Chicago, where I was studying. And the one in the University of Chicago is one block of granite, which is 12 feet high, 25 feet from nose to tail, and 4 feet thick. Now, that's a piece of stone. Granite, carved, beautifully carved. That was one of a set of eight at the entrance to the palace of the king of Assyria in the city of Kharsabad, one of, one of the many palaces of the Assyrian kings. I mean, Nineveh was the great city. Kharsabad was another one. When King Shargon II, Sargon II of Assyria, built his palace, this is what he had in front of his palace. At the entrance to the palace were these eight figures of bulls with wings and the eagles and man's head. I guess it was his head sculpted. Uh, all guarding the entrance to the palace. That was in Assyria, Babylonia, in Phoenicia. And in Phoenicia, they did something else. They had um, the, really, the greatest artists and architects for a long time. And uh, they had many interesting artistic figures. For example, they specialized in ivory sculpture. And they would carve in ivory either in full round form or in bas-relief, hundreds and hundreds of bas-relief carvings of ivory. And we have these figures, lion's body, wings eagles, man's head. The Egyptians had a different form. Lion's body, man's head, no, no wings. The sphinx. Why no wings? Because in the ideology of Egypt, there's no place to go. I mean, everything is here. <laughs> this is the world. We have the river. We have the fields. We have the sun. And outside is the desert. And who needs that? And that's it. So you don't need wings, because this is the place. So the Egyptians did it without wings. By the way, there is the throne, the throne of Tutankhamun, 
also had uh, the throne was made with the arms were the lion's legs. The wings were there in the back of the throne. So the throne of Tutankhamun actually had all three elements. I guess the head was on the king as he was sitting on the throne, but he's not sitting there anymore. But in any event, this is the nature of the Krub. Now, the Krub was, of course, a symbolic animal. But all of these kings had these Krubs as guardians of the entrance to their palaces. So when we read at the end of chapter 3 that God put the, the Kerubs at the entrance to the Garden of Eden, to keep human beings from coming in, to prevent us from getting that which we really want, which is the secret of eternal life, we can't do that because these guardians won't let us in. Not only that, but they also have a sword which revolves and in flame. So how can you get through that? Anyway. But the whole thing is, is fascinating in portraying that this garden of God, Eden, the source of divine power and the the due residence of the divine king is barred to human beings forever. We can never get into, the, we can never get there. And if we should ever approach the entrance, we'll be barred from entering. But anyway, it was Mikedem, a long, long time ago, before the beginning of time, you might say.